Thank you for inviting me to speak at this important event. My deep appreciation to His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco for your continued leadership on this important topic. My thanks also to Jamie Spister, Australia's Ambassador for the Environment, to my ex-colleague Minna Epps from IUCN, and to scientist Dr. David Souter, Dr. Serge Plains, for driving this critical scientific piece on the status of our coral reefs. It's a pleasure to be here today, surrounded even if virtually, by former colleagues and continued collaborators. However, it is not a great pleasure to be again talking about the decline of our coral reefs, which IUCN has been flagging for years. Most of us don't get to see coral reefs, but out of sight can't be out of mind for such important ecosystems. So while coral reefs cover less than 1% of the ocean, they serve as home to a quarter of all marine life, living in symbiotic relationships honed by millions of years of evolution. For humanity, they provide food, medicines, protection from storms, recreation, and inspiration. Unfortunately, according to the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network, 14% of the coral from the world's reefs disappeared between 2009 and 2018. Coral building species are disappearing the fastest due to climate change. Last month's IPCC report told us that climate change is intensifying and fast. And that is a disaster for coral reefs, as also underwritten by the 2020 research from IPBES. Coral reefs are projected to decline up to 30% of former cover at 1.5 degree warming. And at 2 degrees warming, only 1% of corals will remain. Essentially, we're talking about de facto extinction. Now, such statistics make it absolutely clear why success in the Paris Agreement is a non-negotiable, not just for reducing emissions, which is absolutely essential, but also to adapt to existing and growing impacts. Friends, as the world gets to work dealing with climate change, we need to keep a close eye on coral reefs. Monitoring the status and trends is crucial to understand change, to inform responses, and to track progress in protection goals. High-quality data supports research and modeling to predict coral reef responses to climate stress and the likely success of management actions. For example, this report brings hope by identifying those reefs that seem to be more resilient and might hold the key to survival, the so-called climate refugia. Such science can help to deliver and direct the necessary funding for reefs. There's already a clear case for increased investment in coral reefs. Coral reefs provide society with resources and services of about 375 billion US dollars per year. Investing in coral reefs could prevent a decline of about 37 billion dollars for Indonesia and 35 billion dollars for the Mesoamerican reef by 2030. But we need to understand that between 2010 and 2016, we only invested about 1.9 billion to conservation and sustainable management of coral reefs, of mangroves, and of seagrasses. So the Global Fund for Coral Reefs and other initiatives alongside, they really do provide an opportunity to close this investment gap, including in attracting blended public and private finance. But as I have mentioned, it is important that we don't just invest anywhere, but that we are sure and that we monitor well to know where to spend this scarce and precious money. The Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network is therefore very important and a critical scientific resource. Aside from identifying funding opportunities, the work of the network provides a really important baselines and opportunities so that we can track progress, and that matters greatly. The work of this network is particularly important to the post-2020 global biodiversity framework because it will reflect the scientific leaps and bounds that enable us to identify, to monitor, to report, and to adjust benchmarks. So this will increase the chances of delivering on the clear and ambitious targets for the global biodiversity framework once we have agreed it. Friends, the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network is the only network to monitor the status of coral reefs at the global level. If the international community supports and strengthens this network, we will increase our chances of ensuring the survival of the world's crucial and beautiful 
coral reef ecosystems. And this is what we all want.